Namaste. Good evening. This is Dr. Aparna. I am an Ayurvedic psychotherapist, a passionate Ayurveda and psychotherapy infopreneur, medical writer, a neuropsychology and psycho-oncology educator. In my pursuit to address, promote and propagate Ayurveda and psychotherapy globally, I come up with talk throughs and discussions every week. So, in the previous session, we were discussing about the book, The Power of Habit. So, today we are continuing the discussion. We were discussing about the habit loop. So, the habit loop is, you know, uh, a neurological cycle with the three components. So, the three components are first is the cue. The trigger that initiates the habit, that means feeling tired, cues the coffee, you you know, routine, for example. And routine is the actual behavior performed. So we discussed about making coffee. And the reward uh, is the benefit or the satisfaction received, you know, the caffeine boost or the energy boost. So we also discussed about why this happens. See, our brains are wired for efficiency. So habits allow uh, us to perform actions without conscious thought. You know, freeing up mental resources for other tasks. By identifying the cue, routine and reward in the inner habit loop, you can gain control over your behavior. So, um, next uh, chapter is the craving brain. So, so the, this chapter of the book delves into the science behind the habit loop. So, what is the science behind the habit loop? So, um, we uh, the role of here, um, it is, you know, the habit uh, loop is because of the role of the basal ganglia. So, a brain region responsible for automating, you know, routines. The basal ganglia is a region in the brain which is responsible for automating routines. Uh, And dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure and reward. This is because of uh, basal ganglia and dopamine. So, uh, you know... um, what the uh, you know big industries or big companies leverage this knowledge of basal ganglia and dopamine to create products that trigger cravings and keep us coming back for more so for example when we experience a reward after a routine dopamine levels rise so which reinforces the habit loop So companies use these cues for packaging, for advertising to trigger cravings and make their products more desirable. So fast food chains, for example, design their food to be highly palatable, so which leads to a dopamine spike and a desire to repeat the experience. So here a case study was done. Uh, you know, um, well-known fast food change uses a combination of cues and rewards. The cues could be a familiar logo or a familiar arch and rewards could be high fat, high sugar food, which creates a habit loop and tastier, highly palatable food. So their fries are specifically designed to melt in your mouth what happens is this delivers a quick and satisfying reward that strengthens the craving for more. You go back again for that fast food. So the next thing is the golden rule of habit change. This chapter, chapter 3, discusses or introduces the key principle for changing habits. So you can't erase a habit. But 
the author says you can redirect it so this the golden rule states that by keeping the cue and reward the same you can replace the unwanted routine with a new and beneficial one this is called habit hijack so habit hijacking what it does it is it leverages the existing loop to establish a more positive behavior so we keep the cue we keep the reward the same only the routine the unwanted routine is replaced or redirected with a beneficial positive behavior or routine so there is a for example a case study a woman struggling with you know debilitating eating disorder so identified stress as the cue for her binges so stress is the cue why she binges and why she feels overwhelmed and why she starts eating so the reward was the temporary comfort the food provided so q is the stress reward is the temporary comfort which the food provides her what was done here is she used the golden rule by keeping the stress the same as the q and the desire for comfort as the reward but replaced the unhealthy routine with healthier coping mechanism like meditation or exercise or eating healthy or binging on healthy food rather than binging on junk food binging on you know healthy food so with portion control she only changed the women kept the cue as stress the stress was the same and the desire for you know comfort the reward was also same but the only replacement here is the routine you know she started when she felt you know uh, when she felt the stress what she did was she started meditation she or she started some exercise or she start or she you know ate some healthy food so according to the time she changed the uh, you know routine just the routine without changing the cue and the reward so her habit was replaced so you know redirected it is so the second part in this book discusses about the power of habit in successful organizations so this chapter introduces the concept of keystone habits so habits that have a domino effect influencing other behaviors across an organization or individual life see keystone habits are like cornerstones so they hold the structure together so they hold the organization together by focusing on a keystone habit you can trigger a chain reaction of positive changes in other areas as well so for example a a man who is the ceo of, of a company transform the company culture by establishing safety as a keystone habit so this focus on safety led to improved employee morale reduced accidents and ultimately it led to increased productivity and you know profitability so the emphasis on safety so empl- it could be employee safety you know um what happened is the emphasis on the safety here rippled through the organization so it not only um you know led for, you know led to the improved employee morale but also reduced the accident it also increased the productivity it also increased the profitability because employee safety was taken as a keystone habit employees also you know uh, focused on productivity and profitability so the emphasis on the safety here rippled through the organization so influencing also the other aspects of behavior so the chapter 5 here is the habit of success 
so this chapter explores the role of habits in achieving goals and building success so how can habits help in achieving goals and building success so it also discusses about the concept of will power why is will power very important you know to redirect the habit or to build the habit of success and how habits can automate behavior so reducing the need for constant will power exertion so will power is needed to build a habit but habits once it is you know once there is a habit formed that habits can automate behavior so there is um in turn there will be reduced need for constant will power exertion you know you uh, and then you don't need after a you know a brief period of developing or forming a good habit you don't need uh, for the constant will power exertion so successful people often have well defined routines and habits so you might have heard so successful have you know successful people have uh, these disciplines these routines these habits so successful people often have well defined routines and habits that guide their behavior so these habits free up the mental energy allowing them to focus on more strategic task so habits can be seen as a form of pre commitment so you decide in advance what you will do reducing the need to rely on will power in the moment and you are freeing up your mental energy as well allowing you know your men- that uh, the mental energy to to focus on uh, more strategic tasks so a case study was done on legendary athletes who were you know known for their dedication to specific training habits so their consistent routines and focus on core skills played a significant role in their achievements so their habits played a significant role in their achievements so the next part and the next chapter the habits of societies and the next chapter chapter 8 talks about how movements happen so this chapter examines how social movements spread through the formation of shared habits so it explores on how leaders can leverage the habit loop to mobilize people and create social change so here we are talking not only the habit loop uh, about the self uh, improvement or the self development uh by the habit loop but here we're talking that habit loop can create a social change so social movements rely on creating shared cues and rewards to mobilize people and create social change so leaders can use rallies protests boycotts as cues to trigger a sense of social responsibility and justice is the reward here so this reinforces the habit of participation and strengthens the movement so a case study was done the civil rights movements of the 1960s is the prime example so leaders like martin luther king junior used tactics like boycotts and sit-ins to disrupt the status quo these actions served as cues for the people to participate and the sense of collective action and progress towards equality provided the reward so the reward was the equality and the progress and the cues here were boycotts and sit-ins the strengthened uh, this strengthened the habit of non violent resistance and ultimately contributed to a significant social change so this is how habit loop can also contribute to significant social change next is free will so here this chapter explores the complex relationship between habits and free will 
so it discusses the impacts of habits on our choices you know and behaviors raising questions about the extent of our control over our actions so habits undoubtedly influence our behavior but the book doesn't suggest they eliminate free will entirely so the book says the book uh, talks about you know the author talks about we can still choose to be aware of our habits and make conscious decisions to change them as we say that our habits are automated but the author also uh, explains you know the importance of free will we can still choose to be aware of our habits and make conscious decisions if we want to change them if we if a person has any bad habit it can be changed or redirected to a good habit you know um, a case study was done with a man uh, on a man with a rare neurological condition so the person had difficulty initiating new actions so his case highlights the role of habits in guiding our behavior even when we are unaware of them so this man what he did was even after having a rare neurological condition he could you know uh, continue uh, you know his routine because the habits all guided in his behavior so um you know ability uh, this book uh, provides uh, you know this uh, the power of habit also as i said talks about you know uh, we say that um, habits function like being on an autopilot so habit is a way for us to save energy so habits have a profound effect on our personal and professional life so some while some habits have a positive effect other habits you know have a negative effect so we also have to talk about you know um will power see will power um the author says is definitely one of the most important habits because it translates to all other areas in the life so charles duhigg points out that will power is the single most important keystone habit for individual success you know based on many studies so how do we cultivate will power first of all we need to understand that we have a limited supply of will power each day and using your will power in one area of your life diminishes your reserve of will power for other areas that's why it is so hard to motivate yourself to go to the gym after a hard day's work but will power also functions like a muscle and like a muscle you can strengthen your will power and get a higher supply of it so um some ways is to you know start an activity that challenges you and allows you to practice delayed gratification then you have to practice that activity regularly then you are you plan for moments of adversity where your will power may be weakened so the inflection points uh, could be the stress the uncertainties where we can lose our self discipline so um the con- here the conclusion is definitely you know uh, the difference the habits are like the difference between who you want to be and who you are you know the difference between who you want to be and who you are is what you do that is the habit the di- who you want to be and who you are and what you are doing to you know culminate the difference is the habit so that ends the you know book 
summary. So that is the conclusion to the book summary. And uh, thanks for staying tuned. If you have any queries, your thoughts, your suggestions, and your key takeaways, please do please do mention that in the comment section.